हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अनीता फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ माइक्रोबायोलॉजी महर्षि दयानंद यूनिवर्सिटी रोहतक हरियाणा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट मॉड्यूल फूड सेफ्टी एंड डेरी बायोटेक्नोलॉजी फ्रॉम पेपर एनिमल सेल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी सो द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव्स आर फूड सेफ्टी एंड इट्स सिग्निफिकेंस फेडरल एजेंसी techniques in food preservation and application of biotechnology in dairy industry so starting with the introduction food hygiene are the condition that is necessary to ensure the safety of a food from its production to the consumption now the foods become contaminated at any point during harvesting or slaughtering so the food safety is a scientific discipline describing preparation storage and handling of a food in ways that prevent food borne illnesses so if food is not safe it can leads to many food borne illnesses food borne illnesses is an illness carried out carried out or transmitted to people through contaminated food and leads to food poisoning so there are various types of food that includes non perishable foods and the examples are sugar flour and dry beans semi perishable foods these foods that can be stored with proper care and examples are potatoes onions and then third one is perishable food that include meat fish poultry fruits and vegetables need of food safety as we know food is the very important part of our life and if we take uh, if we take fresh food then it it would be helpful for our health so as the potential health risk from food consumptions so there are very health risk if we take the contaminated foods that include microbiological viral and parasitic concerns in microbiological if we take contaminated food then the bacteria or any other microbes will enter in our body and it creates very serious health hazards and in in the case of viral and other parasitic it is the same next is hormone residues if we are taking any animal foods and sometimes what happen uh, some injections are given to the cattle for example oxytocin that comes into the milk or any other animal food and we take it directly and it affects our health next animal drugs that includes antibiotics so antibiotics are also affect our body if we take the food contaminated with antibiotics then it affect the human health the next is the chemical residues as many pesticides are used for the crops and these pesticides comes into the food and we take directly in the food and it affect very serious diseases next is preservatives preservatives are the main part that are involved in the food preservation for example in pickles or any other foods various types of preservatives are used for their preservation for example benzoates and others they are used for the preservation of pickles and these pickles we take directly and these preservatives comes to in our body and creates many diseases that affect our internal body system next is bioengineered foods today bioengineered foods are very specific in our life and these have various types of food but they have not nutritional value federal agencies various federal agencies are involved that check the quality of the food if they are 
specific for human health so many federal agencies are involved that includes fda that is the food and drug administration this industry take care of food that come into the market and check the quality next is animal plant and health inspection service that is aphias that includes uh, this check the animal or plant foods that comes into the market and also inspect the health hazards regarding the foods next is agriculture marketing services ams this federal agency check the quality of cereals or any other agricultural foods next is food and nutrition service that is fns it also check the quality and nutritional quality of the food next is occupational safety and health administration that is osha o s h a it also check the quality of the occupational labor that uh, affect the quality of the food next is consumer product safety commission cpsc and environmental protection agency epa next is food safety regulation as we know food safety is everyone's responsibility regarding this hacp is current food regulation program and hacp stands for hazard analysis critical control point this safety program have some plans which includes assemble hacp team in this this agency assemble a team that check the quality of the food or if any case or any outbreak come into the society so it plans accordingly next describe the food and the method of distribution according to this plan it describe the quality of food and how these food are distributed into the society then identify the intent in use and consumer of the food so how the consumers are identifying the this particular food if it is contaminated then develop a flow diagram which describe the process then these team develop a flow diagram which tells from where the contamination or spoilage of food occur then verification after coming to these point this team verify and conclude how this outbreak come then what is the principles of hacp program that include conduct a hazard analysis that is biological hazard for example any bacteria fungi or any other parasite chemical hazard that include nitrite toxicity if any outbreak comes from any chemicals or next is the physical hazard that include any metal that comes into the water or any food material then it identify the critical control point in the process that is uh, what was the temperature at which that particular microorganism was grown then establish limits for preventive measure associated with each ccp for example reach temperature of 140 degree fahrenheit established limits for preventive measures associated with each ccp it includes the measures that procure the hacp from where this contamination or spoilage occur then establish ccp monitor requirement for example thermometer if there is any need to check out the problem they require the any monitor that is uh, for example thermometer then establish corrective action to be taken when monitoring 
indicates a critical limit deviation. Then establish effective record keeping procedures that document the HACCP system. Then establish procedures for verification that the HACCP system is working. It leads to, if any outbreak comes, then it leads to various serious disease and this is called as foodborne diseases. It has two parts, foodborne infection and foodborne intoxication. Foodborne infection occurs when we take contaminated food having microorganism and we take that particular food and that microorganism comes to the body and create infection or create their poison in the body. And foodborne intoxication when we, we take food that is contaminated with microorganisms but in this case microorganism release toxin in the particular food and we take that food having toxin and it creates many health hazards to the human. It includes pathogenic bacteria that comes to the our body and create very serious illnesses that already told food intoxication. It is caused by the ingestion of toxins and food infection, ingestion of pathogenic organism that grow and cause illness. So if we talk about microbiological concerns, there are various microorganisms that leads to foodborne diseases. First is Clostridium botulinum. This is gram positive bacteria having rod shape and anaerobic. They are spore forming motile bacteria with the ability to produce neurotoxin botulinum. So these are gram positive as shown in the picture. They have purple color after gram staining. Next is Salmonella. This is the another bacteria have food bone diseases. This is carried out in the intestinal tract. This comes into the body when we take the food that is not properly cooked. So to keep away this bacteria, we take properly boiled or cooked food and also avoid cross-contamination. And this cross-contamination occurs when different types of foods are mixed and if there is contamination in one food and that particular contaminated food become the part of or source of the spoilage. This bacteria is gram negative after gram straining. So uh, there are various microbiological concerns. If we take any contaminated or spoiled foods, so what happened? That cause a various foodborne illnesses that includes various hazardous disease and the various bacteria, fungi or viruses involved for the same. Then if we talk about the bacterial foodborne illnesses first is campylobacter jejuni that enter inside the body if the proper sanitation not be taken and it creates a very large problem so the main source of campylobacter jejuni is proper cooking in helps control if we are not taking proper cooked food then this campylobacter jejuni that is the source of contamination comes from food to inside our body and create various foodborne illnesses and to avoid this problem we have to avoid cross contamination next is listeria monocytogens that grow at refrigerated temperature that is very low temperature and the main target of this listeria monocytogen is pregnant women in pregnant women it cause disease also in the infant young and elder are also the main target of listeria monocytogenes 
and it can be avoided with proper cleaning and by taking the cooked food. Now, cause of bacterial foodborne illness. So, there are many reasons from where these foodborne illnesses comes. So, on the basis of scales, we estimate that improper holding temperature creates 63 percent food spoilage and cause illnesses poor personal hygiene creates 28 percent it includes if a person that prepare or cooking the food is not hygiene the hands were not properly washed then it creates contamination and spoilage in the food then contaminated equipment creates 23 percent chances if we are using any equipment for example knife or any other utensil that is used in the kitchen if it, it is not properly washed or there is any contamination is there then it creates 23 percent chances of contamination then inadequate cooking creates 21 percent chances it includes if the food is not properly cooked or it have contamination of microorganism then it leads to 21 percent chances then food from unsafe source it creates 12 percent chances then others have 20 percent chances of contamination then total exceeds 100% because multiple factors may be involved. If these all factors involved, then the chances of foodborne illnesses will be 100%. Sources of bacterial foodborne illness. Food service establishments have 77% chances of contamination. Private home have 20% and food processor have. 3% chances. What can we do to prevent the foodborne illness? If we come out from these diseases, so what we have to do? So, food safety is everyone's responsibility. It includes producers, processors, and consumers. There are various food preservation techniques that include low temperature, high temperature, dehydration and further radiation. So first we talk about low temperature treatment. That means if foods, if we want to preserve the food, we have to keep that food, particular food at the low temperature. So temperature approaching 0 degree centigrade and lower retard the growth of metabolic activity of the microorganisms. So, modern refrigeration and freezing equipment that includes refrigerator or deep freezers has made it possible to transport and store the perishable food for longer period of time. Any food that need to be preserved must be free from microorganism before preservation. So, uh, this low temperature preservation includes two different methods that is chilling and freezing. Chilling involves preservation of foods like meat, egg, fish and vegetables only for few days at a temperature between 4 degree centigrade to 7 degree centigrade. If food are kept for longer periods, undesirable changes due to active enzymes and psychophilic organisms such as pseudomonas fluorescens and some micrococcus species take place causing spoilage. The preservation technique include freezing. This process is used for preservation perishable plants and animal products for long periods from weeks to months. Before freezing, the foods are stored, trimmed, washed and blanched. Blanching destroys most of the microorganism and inactivates enzymes that would alter the product even at low temperatures. Quick freezing, which is preferred to slow freezing, implies a freezing time of 30 minutes or less and the temperature between 18 degrees centigrade 
minus 34 degree centigrade. The microbial count of most frozen foods decreases during storage, but many microorganisms, including pathogens, for example, salmonella, that survive for long periods of time at minus 9 to minus 17 degree centigrade. However, frozen food should be immediately used after thawing because the surviving microorganisms begin to multiply as soon as they are warm. Frozen foods are not expected to lose their nutritional value, but the flavor and aroma of fresh food is lost with the length of storage period. Next preservation technique is heat treatment that includes high temperature. It is one of the most reliable and safest method of food preservation that includes pasteurization. It is used especially when the aim is to kill pathogenic microorganisms and where the spoilage organisms are not very heat resistant and the product cannot stand high temperatures. The minimal heat treatment for market mill in 62.8 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes in the holding method and 71.7 degree centigrade for about 15 seconds in the HTST method that is high temperature short time period then steam under pressure it include a pressure cooker it is the most effective method since it kills all vegetative cells and spores so dehydration dried foods have been used for centuries and they are more common throughout the world than frozen foods. The removal of water by drying in the sun and air or with applied heat causes dehydration. Then food products containing 10% or less of free moisture are not subjected to spoilage by the microorganisms as their activity is suspended. Once dehydrated, the food should be kept in airtight container so that it is not exposed to fluctuation in humidity content of the atmosphere. Slight increase in moisture content will permit growth of various microorganisms such as molds, yeast and bacteria. Next method is chemical treatment. Chemical preservatives are added to kill or inhibit microorganisms in food. They may be incorporated into foods or only their surface or the wrappers used for them. It may be treated or they may be used as gas or vapors around the food. Chemical preservatives may be harmless if they are added during the storage period and are removed before the food is consumed. But if they are consumed as such, they may be poisonous to man or animal as well as to microorganisms. So these includes organic acids and their salts. Benzoic acid and benzoates are used for the preservation of vegetables. Sodium benzoate is used in the preservation of jellies, jam, fruit juices and other acidic foods. Salicyclic acid and salicyclates are used as preservatives of fruits and vegetables in place of benzoate. However, it is considered to be deleterious to health of consumer. Now, inorganic acids and their salts, most common among the inorganic acids and their salts are sodium chloride, hypochlorite, sulfurous acids and sulfides sulfur dioxide, sodium nitrate and sodium nitrites. So the sodium chloride includes, it produces high osmotic pressure and therefore causes destruction of many microorganisms by plasmolysis. Then another is nitrates and nitrites, how it affects the growth of microorganisms. It produces an inhibitory effect on bacterial growth and are used usually together in meat and fish preservations and for retention of red color of the meat. Nitrate is changed to nitrous acid which react with myoglobin.
to give nitric oxide myoglobin it is the latter which gives a bright red color to the meat making it more attractive in appearance however both nitrite and nitrate are poisonous if present in potable water or food products in more than minimal amounts it is why the generous use of these chemicals as preservative in meat and fish products has been questioned so what is the time temperature abuse so time temperature abuse is what happens when potentially hazardous foods are left in the temperature danger zone for too long a potentially hazardous food is any food that will support the growth of harmful microbiological organisms food items high in protein such as meat soya products and dairy items are usually considered potentially hazardous food and need special handling care the temperature danger zone is the temperature range in which harmful microbiological organisms grow or reproduce most probably so our uh, next topic is dairy biotechnology so how biotechnology helps in the food preservation and the food safety so biotechnology finds immense commercial application in the dairy industry as it can be used to enhance the economic and nutritional benefit of milk producing animals milk able to fulfill almost all the nutrition requirement and is essential part of our diet india ranks first in milk production accounting for 18.5% of world production in spite of number 1 milk producer and continuous increase in milk production only 220 ml of milk is available to per capita in india which is far below from minimum requirement that is 280 ml so indian population is rising with the rate of 1.8% and demand for milk is expected to rise to around 130 to 150 metric ton in year around 2030 so milk constitute an excellent medium for the growth of microorganism freshly drawn milk from healthy animals contains small number of harmless microorganisms so however during milking process and storage the contamination take place so the extent of which depends upon the hygienic measure taken before during and after milking process and the storage condition observed thereafter so milk condition can be affected before milking and after milking and the proper care uh, can be taken if, to avoid the food safety so nearly all the changes that take place in the flavor and appearance of the milk after it is drawn from the cow are the result of activities of microorganisms therefore it is very essential to control these microorganisms now application of biotechnology in dairy industries biotechnology has already made significant contribution in dairy industry some of the potential applications and target area where biotechnology has already made its impact along with future prospects are given here so that includes recombinant bovine or buffalo somatotrophin that is rbst human manipulation dna fingerprinting and rflp embryo transfer technology animal cloning and gene farming and transgenics so recombinant bovine growth hormone recombinant bovine somatotrophin used to increase milk production by the cattle so rbgh raises level of insulin like growth factors in cows and cows milk igf1 survives 
pasteurization and gastric digestion occurs. Next technique is embryo transfer technology. So it involves the removal of an embryo from a female of superior genetics and the placement of the embryo into the reproductive tract of female of average genetics. The goal of embryo transfer technology is to obtain the maximum number of genetically superior embryos in a minimum amount of time. So uh, this technique is the artificial insemination in cattle is based on that the males generally produce large quantity of semen which can be extended and preserved. The artificial insemination technology takes advantage of the capability of male animal to produce multiplies of millions of male gametes, each of which represents half of the genetic constitution of its producer. Therefore, a male highly selected for a desired genetic constitution through artificial insemination can change the genetic character of the population. A reproductively sound cow may not usually produce more than 8 calves in her lifetime despite her ovarian potential to produce many thousands of gametes. With the application of embryo transfer technology, higher rate of multiplication of highly selected female germ plasm is possible which can further revolutionize the cattle industry. Then dairy processing include designing milk through genetic engineering, genetically modified organisms that include starter culture, genetic modified foods, food grade biopreservatives, recombinant dairy enzyme or proteins, accelerated cheese ripening, probiotic, functional foods and nutraceuticals, then gene swaps and PCR based pathogen detection. So designing milk through genetic engineering, this is the comparison of milk of human and cows. So uh, there is the 26% increase in the milk production and if the genetic engineered cows are, are used then the production in milk or animal, animal food increases. Then genetically modified milk is a byproduct from genetically modified cattle to produce milk that contain little to no of an allergic protein called beta lactoglobulin. Another example of genetically modified milk is genetically modified cattle to produce human like milk. So scientists use cloning technology to introduce human genes in the DNA of cattle. Genetically modified organisms. So these are the microorganisms involved to uh, enhance the activity of a particular microbes. So that includes starter culture. Starter culture have the good quality and these are prerequisite for the preparing good quality of fermented foods. These fermented foods are the foods which are produced after the fermentation in which microbes are used for example curd, idli and dosa. The significance that many commercially important traits of these bacteria are infect, plasmid and codet and these include lactose utilization, citrate utilization, phage resistant, proteinase production and bacteriocin production and these bacteriocin are the chemicals produced by microorganism that have antibacterial or antimicrobial activity it enhances the immunity of humans then food grade biopreservatives appropriate food grade biopreservatives can be developed to control undesirable bacteria and molds in dairy foods by following these strategies for direct application in dairy industry that is bacterial inhibition and fungal inhibition. Then recombinant dairy enzymes or protein, it includes advances in biotechnology also made a strong impact on production of several enzymes and proteins using dairy industry in the processing of milk for the manufacture of some fermented products. 
production level are not very high in the producer organisms food processes has benefited from biotechnologically produced enzymes such as chymosin proteases lipases alpha myelases and lactases which can find lot of application in dairy industry genetically engineered enzymes are easier to produce enzymes isolated from original sources the next is probiotics so what are probiotics these probiotics are live microbial feed supplements that have beneficial effect on the host by improving its intestinal microbial balance so it provides health benefit when consumed as food supplements or as food components probiotic potentials of these bacteria is exploited it includes lactobacillus species such as lactobacillus acidophilus lactobacillus casei and lactobacillus bulgaricus and bifidobacterium bifidum it shows strong anti carcinogenic and anti cholesterolemic activity and the good example of probiotic is yakult so there are several characteristics of effective probiotics that includes it should be able to survive the passage through the digestive system and able to attack the intestinal epithelia and colonize it must be able to maintain good viability it must be able to utilize the nutrients and substrates in a normal diet and the most important part it should be non pathogenic and non toxic then it is capable of exerting a beneficial effect on the host and it should be anti inflammatory anti mutagenic and immuno stimulatory effect so uh, what is the advantages of probiotics so probiotics produce lactic acid that lower the ph of ph of intestine and inhibit the bacterial villains such as clostridium salmonella shigella and e coli it decreases the production of variety of toxic or carcinogenic metabolites that aid absorption of minerals especially calcium due to the increased intestinal acidity the production of beta d galactosidase enzyme break down the lactose so uh, it produce a wide range of antimicrobial substances that is bacteriocins and it includes acidophilin etc that help to control pathogenic bacteria what this probiotics do they, they when we take uh, probiotics it kills the pathogenic bacteria that enter inside our body by producing chemicals these are bacteriocin they are also helpful to produce vitamins especially vitamin b and vitamin k it act as barriers to prevent harmful bacteria from colonizing the intestine so main part is the it helps in lowering the cholesterol level a range of lactic acid bacteria able to break down bile in the gut thus inhibiting its absorption which enter the blood as cholesterol so main disease is the antibiotic associated diarrhea what happen in this disease occur when the contaminated food comes in inside the body and we take any medical treatment that includes several antibiotics and these antibiotics disturb the gut microbiota that means it kills our own microbial biota that is very beneficial for the human health and this antibiotics kills the pathogen as well as our microbial flora so if we use probiotic then it kills the pathogenic microorganisms and also take care of our microbial flora then it uh, keeps the balance of microbial flora of the human body and also help in the treatment of diarrhea now the functional foods and nutraceuticals 
so functional foods are supposed to have a added value of for consumers that means these foods have some uh, some important values that enhance the activity uh, when comes inside the body it is used for health improvements and or minimize the risk to develop certain diseases nutraceuticals designer foods healthy foods or pharma foods specifically designed to control a number of chronic diseases such as obesity diabetes hypertension and other cardiovascular diseases cancer and enteric disorders and to summarize the presentation food safety is the mandatory part of life to be healthy the use of global food safety and quality standard have become a major driver of the implementation of preventive control in the food industry the investigation of food borne illnesses focus agency and the food industry on identifying problems thank you